Thank you for bringing me here today. Give him glory, give him honor, worship him. Worship the ancient of days. Bless, bless him forever. He deserves, he deserves the praise. There's no one like him. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty, we worship you, we adore you, we bless your holy name. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for the work you have already started here. And we know that whatever you start, we are able to finish. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are dedicating this building to you today. We are asking that from this very moment, this place will become a miracle center. Amen. We pray that if the sick comes here, the sick will be healed. Amen. If the bound comes here, the bound will be free. Amen. If the barren comes here, let the barren become fruitful. If the stagnant comes here, let the stagnant begin to make progress. Father, if they bring the dead here, let the dead rise. Let every prayer prayed here from now on be answered by fire. Everyone who ever come in here to worship Lord, let them receive a miracle. And let the miracles begin now. Amen. Even as we dedicate this place to you in the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Well, shake hands with one or two people and say, God, we surprise you today. And then you may please be seated. Well, congratulations, uh, my beloved son and his wife. You may not appreciate what God is doing now uh, because I have taking a firm decision a long time ago that I would leave church dedication to my assistants. Uh, but uh, to every rule, there's an exception. So you are an exception. Your congregation is an exception. 
Congratulations. God bless you. Okay, you can be seated. Um, so, and in the last few years, if I ever dedicated any church, particularly at home, I go in, pray the prayer I've just prayed, ask the people present to ask what, for whatever they want, and then I say it is done in Jesus' name, and I walk out. But again, I'm going to preach. There must be something special about this church. <laughs> Glory be to God. Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In thy presence is fullness of joy. If we are to do a Bible study on that passage, we would have taken the text from the angle of fullness of joy. And then look at joy. And look at the spectrum of joy. Look at it from the angle that somewhere far to the left there is something called sorrow unspeakable. And you will find this if you study the story of Job. That when the friends of Job came to see him and they saw what had happened to him, for seven days and seven nights, they sat down with him in sorrow without speaking a word. Now that's called sorrow unspeakable. That's on one end. And then you continue to climb from that valley and you get to the other extreme end that is called joy unspeakable. When one is so full of joy, he can't even say it out. And then we can come to the center of it all and consider what is called the fullness of joy. And then we can discuss the fact why it is only in the presence of God that your joy can be full. Because when you are out there, uh, the Bible says you are to rejoice with those who rejoice and you are to weep with those who weep. Which means even if you are not the one in sorrow and you see somebody else in sorrow, you are to share. But in the presence of God, sorrow is not allowed at all. It is joy that is full. And if this is the only thing I have come to say to you today, it will be enough. And that is to tell you that because you are here today, from this moment onward, you will know the fullness of joy. Yeah. But then how come the, the Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. It is because, number one, 
He is the great physician. He never refers a case. If Jesus does not heal you, it can only mean one thing. Your appointed time to die has come. But to say that he can heal, forget it. When all doctors have said there's nothing more we can do, Jesus Christ will say, that's good. Now, when I heal you, they will know who did the healing. That is why, if you read Mark chapter 2 from verse 1 to 12, Mark 2, 1 to 12, those boys who brought their friends who have been paralyzed from neck downwards, when they got to where Jesus was and uh, there was no room to come in, they went to the roof, broke the roof, and lowered the boy down. Why? If only we can get this man to the presence of God, where well, we know the problem will be solved. Now, they didn't carry you here today. You came in by the grace of God. Right now, you are in his presence. And in the name that's above every other name, you won't live with your sickness. And then, so, so if the sick comes into his presence, you know, sir, I've come to the last bus stop. I've come to the, the great physician himself. So, my joy can begin. If they bring in the captive, someone who is bound by all manners of demons and forces of darkness, the moment they can just get to the presence of the Lord, they know freedom comes. Because the one in whose house they are is the one who is called the Lord of hosts, the commander-in-chief of all forces, whether in heaven or on earth or underneath the earth. So you can understand what happened in Mark chapter 5. You can read it from verse 2 to 20. 2 to 20. It tells you the story of the madman of Gadara. That man who had not, not just one demon troubling him, just a handful of thousands of them. Because Bible scholars, they are not fully agreed on what a legion actually means, but they, they seem to all agree that when we talk about a legion, we are talking of at least 6,000. So if a single man has 6,000 demons, troubling him. You know your case is better than that of that man. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many enemies came with you from whatever nation you come from. Uh, I don't think they are up to 6,000. <laughs> so when that man suddenly saw Jesus coming, ah, I can't go to church, but the church has come to me. Ah, uh, he fell down on his feet and began to worship. Read the story very well. He didn't say a word. Oh, you said there was a conversation going on. It was the demons who started speaking. The man himself just saw Jesus coming and said, my day has come. Fell on his feet. By the time he was getting up from his feet, he was free. In the name that's above every other name, it doesn't matter how many forces of darkness have been bothering you. They will leave you alone today. Yeah. When the poor comes into his presence, something within the poor tells him, ah, my poverty is over. Because the one into whose presence is coming is the one who said in Genesis 17 verse 1, Genesis 17 verse 1, he said, I am the Lord God Almighty. Put in another way, he says, I'm Jehovah El Shaddai, which means the God who is more than enough. The Bible scholars, you know, those who know the Bible really well, says 
he is saying, I am God, your mother's breast. The implication of that is this. It doesn't matter how hungry you are. You can suck the breast of your mom, drink as much milk as you like. When you are tired, the milk is still flowing. After you have taken everything to the extent that you say, okay, God, I don't need any more. God will tell you, I still have much more. I told you once, at least, maybe you had it what, one time or the other. When I first read Psalm 23, verse 5, I say, born again Christian. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over. And in those days, I used to ask God a lot of questions. I was a very curious young Christian. And I said, Father, when the cup was full, why didn't you stop? Why is the cup running over? Is that not a wastage? He said, I just want to show the boy that I have much more from where this thing is coming from. Do I decree to somebody here today that kind of blessing that you will say to God, God, this is too much. Receive it right now. Now, when the baron comes into his presence, he knows that barrenness is over. When you read Genesis chapter 18, you can read it from verse 1 to 14, Genesis 18, 1 to 14. The Bible tells us, in fact, you can study beginning from Genesis chapter 12, that for years, God has been promising Abraham, oh, you'll be the father of many nations, uh, your, your children will be like stars, and so on and so forth. But the day God himself visited, the day Abraham and Sarah sat face to face with God Almighty, God said, I'm not promising now, but I'm decreeing. I've told you in the past, one of these days, you will be the father of nations. But today I am saying, within the next nine months, the first boy will come. So I have good news for those of you who have been making fruitless efforts. Because another word for barrenness is that you struggle, but there's nothing to show for it. In that name that's above every other name, your fruitless efforts end today. Why should a sinner be happy if he finds himself in the presence of God? Because the sinner in the presence of God knows ah, at long last, here comes the Savior. And when God saves you, it turns everything around. Everything. His blood cleanses from all sins. You, you know that. The Bible tells us so. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, Matthew 1, 20, that his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from all their sins. Occasionally, a sinner will look back and say, I wish I didn't do what I did. Occasionally, a murderer will say, ah, why did I do that? The fellow I killed now cannot be brought back to life. Occasionally, a young boy or a young girl will remember something he did or she did in the time of uh, foolishness. Maybe some stealing, a little bit of fraud, cheating in the exam hall, uh, disobeying parents, and wish, oh God, how oh, I wish I never did that and knowing that you are helpless to go to the past 
and put things right. But then suddenly you find yourself in the presence of the Savior who can wipe away every evil thing you have ever done. And then you suddenly realize that it is written, if any, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that, oh, you wonder why then somebody who gets born again is so full of joy. I've always said that if you say you have given your life to Jesus Christ and you are not overflowing with joy, go back to the altar. It means the right thing hasn't happened. <laughs> Some years ago, I went to minister at the University of Ibadan. And uh, one of the professors there got born again. I used to go every month. The following month, when I went back there, he said, Pastor, I have a question for you. And because he's a, he's a professor, I, I was getting ready for a real big theological question. So I'm praying quietly, God help me today. Sir, what is the question? He says, sir, I hope it is not dangerous to be happy all the time. He said, because that's what I have been since last month. I said, that's the purpose of God. That's the plan of God for us. It is our sin that has introduced us to sorrow. And some of us have become so used to sorrow now that if something good happens, we are afraid to rejoice. And you are truly born again, you know joy, joy unspeakable. Joy you can't even explain. And I know what I'm talking about. In those days when I was a little child in the Lord, I would wake up in the night with a song in my mouth. I wonder what is it that is making me so happy. Happy that I'm no longer going to hell. Happy now that God is my friend. Happy now that one day I'm going to see Jesus in glory. Happy that with, with the present situation now, I can cry unto God and he will answer me. So if a sinner comes into the presence of God, he can go back full of joy. And I am uh, encouraging somebody tonight before I pray. If when you say you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you didn't know that joy, that joy like a river, the boils up within you, just springing up. If you didn't know that kind of joy, of joy, maybe you need to come back to the altar and come and ask for the real thing. If you came to the altar with the sorrow of sin, and then the one who is called the body bearer takes the body of your sins away, you will go back rejoicing. And then you will know joy for the rest of your life. So if you are here and you are not sure of your salvation or you have never even answered the altar call, why don't you come and do so now? This is a day like no other day, you know. So I'm going to count from one to four. If you want to give your life to Jesus, Come and stand before the altar and I will pray for you and then we'll be on our way. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, please come. I'm counting now. One. You're welcome. Two. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. This is your day. Don't wait for anyone else. This is... This is your own day, your day of salvation. Keep coming, yes, keep coming. God bless you. Oh, yes, you will know what is called joy. Today, if you will come and give your life to Jesus, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Keep clapping. Three. Oh, glory be to God. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. 
This is the last countdown. I'm about to pray now. So if you are coming, come very quickly. Thank you. Those of you who are clapping, your hands will never dry up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else coming? Oh, yes. Hurry up. Hurry up, my friends. I wait 10 seconds for you. I wait 10 seconds for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, if you are still on the way, just keep coming. I've not said four yet. Uh, make sure you get there before I finish praying. Now, those of you who are here, please talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I've come to surrender my life to you. Please save my soul. Forgive all my sins. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Now, the rest of us, let's stretch our hands to our new brothers and sisters and pray that God will give them genuine salvation. That kind of salvation that will make everything new for them. Pray for them. Intercede for them. And say, Lord, please give them genuine salvation so that everything will become new for them. Intercede for them. Intercede for them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this special day. Lord God Almighty, I'm committing this, your friends, your new friends into your hands. They have come now asking for mercy. Please be merciful unto them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away all their sins. Write their names in the book of life. Let them become true children of God. And from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. And please don't let them backslide. Thank you, my Father and my God. And later on, all your children here will be asking you for one thing or the other. Please, Lord, whatever they ask from you today, before the sun sets, let it become a testimony. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Yeah, now those of you who have come forward, I want you to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> I want to make you a solemn promise as a man of God. From now on, I'll be praying for you. And very soon, you'll be getting miracles you don't even know where it's coming from. I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will attend to you in a moment, and then I will be praying for you. But... Uh, Huh. Today is a special day. I'm going to shake hands with each and every one of you. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you. 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 <laughs> God bless you. 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 Thank you. All right. Now, uh, I think we should give the Lord a big round of applause for that. Thank you, Lord. 
Now it's your turn to pray. You are in the presence of God. And I've asked him that whatever you ask today, before the sun sets, you will get. Amen. So you're going to lift your voice to the Almighty God loud and clear and say, Father, Father this, day, this day, give me my miracle. Me. And tell him what you want. Tell him. Go ahead. Cry to the Almighty God. Forget everybody else. So God, just give me a dedication miracle. A miracle that I will remember this day by. Please, Lord, give it to me and give it to me now. Go ahead. Talk to the Lord. <laughs> 